about anything not mentioned. I, I had two, because I didn't know where to ask it. One was on the revenue side. Are there any projects or additional, you know, with the strategic or master plan, whatever you want to call it, any new revenue engines that are out there that can be explored and or triggers pulled on? Uh, I don't know if it's this fiscal year, if it ends up being, you know, if we didn't budget for it, is there anything that still can be done and be considered gravy? Any yeah, any, other, any, any revenue engines out there that can be explored or acted upon within the village? Gaming is the one I'm on the top of my head. So yeah. I mean, there are, um, you could easily, the council could vote to increase fees for various services. Permits were, were probably below uh, what many communities charge for various permits, so you could work hard at that. Uh, you know, there's a myriad of those, but because not only the village has been in really hard times, so have all of our residents. So the council, rightfully so, has been reluctant to raise, I told you, we ate three years of increases in garbage. Village. And it looked like this year was the year you actually made 30 grand. Yeah. But yeah. that's because we got a really good contract. Yeah. So you know, if the council wants to talk about raising some of those fees, yes, that, that's a revenue source that could be explored, but we've been reluctant as staff to go there until we get some direction. Some direction from the council, that's okay. Video gaming could be a topic, um, and probably at some point we should have a discussion about it. Yeah. And then the other one was, is anything in the budget, because I just going back to the wonderful debates we all hung out at the middle schools, and yeah, I saw that, where Altenheim always tended to be a question, is there anything in the bus budget with all the time specific, or we still have to plan and and we don't have any money to throw at that now? We still have to come up with a comprehensive plan on what we're doing for all the time. Yes. So that's that's fiscal year 17, and we start shovel breaking and stuff like that if there's funds for that. Yes. Probably. Yeah. Could, could we just go back to Dan's point about the revenue thing, which may be an interesting, it's a very good point that you brought up, maybe helpful for all of us if staff were to prepare different revenue reports. I mean, obviously, you know, if they worked on the sales tax and property tax, they're really kind of limited. We're kind of doing a little bit more comprehensive overview of, you know, the 3.7%, I think it was, the, whatever that number was, that um, where our different revenue comes from. I mean, I know we've got vehicle stickers, building permits. There's a number of different sources that we generate revenue from that we may take maybe a, perhaps a comprehensive look at everything it would be helpful instead of trying to and, and as a resident too you know I know I don't want to keep shoveling out taxes and stuff like that oh, right. as a resident right. so again just exploring what's out there I think there's I, I think you break in two categories what we could do is ask staff to you know, take a look at you know, all of our <coughs> property and sales tax related items, which are going to be uh, fees for services uh, or incidental taxes, like a vehicle sticker, that sort of thing, Right. where that you know we can uh, charge them with the task of looking at all of those and what our you know annual income is per item, mm -hmm. and, and then say, you know, if you raise them 5, 10, 15 percent, here's what it equals in dollars and cents. I think what Commissioner Novak is saying, uh, and rightfully so, is are there new opportunities? And the video game would be one that would fall in that category, a brand new opportunity that we currently are not receiving. And, I, and we would ask them to think about if there might be some others. I don't know what those might be right off the top of my head, but um, you know, think about what else might be out there. Well, when Commissioner S. and I attended a class of Elgin. Uh, they gave us three pages of new revenue sources. What and were some of those items, you know? Well, I, I was going to sit down with uh, Tim Fish over the next week or so and show them the things that we get from there. That yes. Some of the stuff I never even thought of that uh, is a good revenue source. Now, uh, 
did they talk about whether or not they apply to non home rule, home rule? Or it, does it, does it, does it does list if it's exclusive it's to home rule or if it's something that a non home rule. Home rule definitely has a little more flexibility um, you know, than, than we do, but that's not to say that there might be some other new revenue sources out there. So yeah, I think that would be a good exercise for staff to work through. And maybe we can't get it implemented in, in this current fiscal year, but we can start planning for it maybe for our ensuing years. Well, just for the record, I wouldn't mind at all, and neither would Tish, if there was more revenue than we put in. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's hard. It's hard operating twenty million dollars with twenty-two thousand dollars of fluff. So I, I don't. I don't want to show any of my cards at yeah. the moment. But I'm just going to talk freely. I shared it with some of y'all already. Uh, yesterday I was a little bit bored last night, and I was looking at uh, uh, gaming revenue in the city of Berwyn for the month of May. During the month of May. Eight million dollars worth was wagered uh, amongst 191 machines in 41 or 42 establishments. Eight million dollars was wagered in there. Um, out of that, they paid out seven million, and then the net ends up getting distributed to the terminal operator, the business owner, and the city. The city made thirty thousand. For the, for the month of May. And of course, I mean, if you carry it out, annualize it, that's a significant chunk of money. I mean, this is real money. It, it's real money. And, uh, you know, so we probably are going to need to do a little more analysis on that. Um, and, uh, and at some point, we probably should have a, a discussion. And that's not to mention, in their particular case, because they are home rule, they charge $1,000 per machine per year for licensing. As I already said, there's 191 machines, so just do the math yourself. That's, three zeros. That's, that's real money. Mayor, what can we get as a non-home rule? 25. 25 I knew that. I just wanted you to say it for the record. Yeah. That's $25? Thank you, State of Illinois. $25 per machine. Um, $7,000. <laughs> yes. But that's not to say that we cannot uh, think outside the box and get a little creative. And let's say we were to go in that direction, then for those establishments that are going to have machines, that we couldn't create a separate uh, liquor license classification and increase, increase the fee. $5,000 if you want to have that, that particular type of license. So I think that fits right in with where there's a will, there's a way. Sometimes you just got to be a little creative. And I also, I just want to echo uh, what Commissioner Novak said, you know, I, I think it's incumbent upon all of us to, um, you know, lessen the, the tax impact to the local homeowner. Let's try to minimize that impact. Let's try and capitalize on things that we can raise new revenue on without touching that uh, property or whatever they may be. Put up a toll gate and charge a toll for it. I'm in. Let's do it.